Welcome back. Let's talk now about controlling spam, which is the main reason why people buy the ESA, controlling spam. And to control spam, we can do it two ways. We can control it at the beginning of the session during the three-way handshake using the sender-based reputation score that we get from Talos. And there's another way that I discussed in my first recording regarding the dynamic way of discovering spam. But on this recording, we will focus on sender-based reputation score from Talos. So where are we in the pipeline? We are actually controlling who can connect, establish a TCP um, port 25 connection on our uh, listener. So we want to control the traffic based on their reputation score. So I discussed Talos during our first uh, recording uh, session for this class. And I mentioned that what Talos is, is actually a group of uh, full-time employees that are tracking live activity on the internet and come up with a score of and a list of bad actors out there. And they track about uh, spammers, those who are propagating malware on the internet. You can find more about Talos if you go check their website. So what do they do? Well, they, 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 uh, they check about 600 different billion email a day. 600 billion email a day gets checked. And we mentioned earlier in the first recording, about 85% of those are spam. They also analyze malware sample and declare what is malware or not. So all that information that Talos is gathering, we want our ESA to start tapping inside that information. And the main thing that the ESA will be using is what we call the sender-based reputation score. So Talos is actually maintaining a list per IP address of who are known spammers, who are suspect spammers, who are propagating malware. And depending on the activity and the reputation of those senders, they will get a score. And the score will be minus between minus 10 and plus 10. One thing that uh, Talos is asking us, actually, is if, if we could help them to turn on the telemetry. And what's turning on telemetry is actually any time that an email will be blocked, your ESA, if you participate with Talos, will be sending the metadata back to Talos. I'll give you an example. You receive an email, and the email looks that it's coming from a legitimate site, and it is. And as you, um, you accept that email, the email gets processed, get checked by antivirus, and McAfee or Sophos discover a virus inside that email. So, and maybe the attachment was simply called mom.jpg. And there's actually inside mom.jpg, there's a virus attached to it. So that email, obviously, with the, the virus, that will be blocked. Hopefully, that's the type of setting you have, that is this virus in infected, you're blocking. Well, if you have set up telemetry, your ESA will actually take the metadata, not the actual message, but the metadata of who did it come from, timestamp, uh, what was the address from, to, uh, what was the name of the attachment that had a virus, and we'll send that actually to Talos. And that helps tell If Talos simultaneously hears by 100 ESAs around the world that they have received actually an email from this source with the attachment called mom.jpg and it was virus infected, that will raise a flag at Talos. And eventually, Talos will take measures such as the outbreak filters to tell the rest of the ESAs, hey guys, watch out for that email with that subject title with an attachment called mom.jpg. So please turn on your telemetry so you can participate and give back to Telos. So we said that Telos will actually give a score to senders. The score will be between minus 10 to plus 10 if there are known senders. And we now know that between minus 10, because we discussed that in the previous uh, recording, that between minus 10 to minus 3, it's considered spammers, so we will not by default accept their connection. If it's minus 3 to minus 1, 
it's considered suspect, so we'll accept the connection, but start throttling it. And anything that is minus 1 to plus 10 is actually what we call unknown. What we mean by unknown is that they are not known to be spammers. Does that mean that their email is perfectly clean and we should just accept it without any check? No. When you fall under the unknown list, we will nevertheless actually filter that email through dynamic spam, which we will talk in the upcoming recording, and we will also filter that email through antivirus and other stuff that we, that we will see. So the reporting score, the, the score, the, SMR, uh, uh, the uh, SBRS score that we have, uh, how will the ESA react to that? Well, by default, actually, if you have a score of minus 3, minus 10 to minus 3, as I mentioned, you will fall under the blacklist. Minus 2 to minus 1, you'll fall in the suspect list. So su suspect list is that, you know what, we have to, we will accept the incoming uh, TCP session, but we will, we will apply some, uh, some um, mail flow policies on it to try to control it better. Unknownness is that you are not known to be a spammer, but nevertheless, we will, we will accept that mail flow policy, but we will actually process it through antivirus and also through anti-spyware. When we are blocking, blocking is blocking. Throttle means that we are actually accepting the TCP request, but we will, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, we will throttle that traffic, maybe limited to not more than 100 emails per hour from that sender. There's also the whitelist. So whitelist actually would be, there's, it's not used by default. You can manually come and assign someone. That could be like the domain of your business partner. And when we are whitelisting a, a domain, we could, we, we, that goes under trusted. And trusted means that we are not doing dynamic anti-spam. We will nevertheless do antivirus but we will not dynamically try to check if the email is spam or not. More on the in the next recording about that dynamic spam. So just to a, a summary here is that when we receive an incoming connection uh, for a SNMP, SMTP request, we will be assigning based on your reputation score, you will be assigned to one of the three sender group. You could go and create some, but by default, that's how they fall into. The sender group that you get assigned will say what will be your mail flow policy. And the mail flow policy will tell us actually to accept or not the connection. And also, should we have additional uh, requirement put on that session, such as suspect list, we will accept the connection, but we will actually apply some restriction, the number of email that can be sent from that sender per hour. So let's have an example of SBRS in, um, uh, in use. So we have for SBRS, we have here that we uh, 1.2.3.4 is coming and they say hello. It's actually a TCP SIM that would come on. Your box that is here, your ESA, will turn around and go and actually query Talos to find out, hey Talos, what's the reputation score of 1.2.3.4? And tell us will return the reputation score and will tell us that reputation score is minus three. And if we find out that it's minus three, minus three, if we look in our, um, in our hat, minus three falls into block list and therefore we would block that connection. So you would decide to either accept based on a reputation score or you can also decide to deny. So that would be blocked because it's a spammer. Or you could throttle the traffic, tell him, hey, you're on the suspect list. You've been sending more than, let's say, 100 emails this one hour. I'm not taking your connection. So where do we go, actually, and uh, play with that uh, sender-based reputation score? Sender-based reputation score, you see it from the hat. So when you go under the hat, that's where you will see for your incoming mail where the score, depending on the reputation score, in what category you will, it will fall. So again, if someone arrives, uh, asks for a TCP connection and they have a score of minus 5, we check here minus 5, minus 5, boom, blacklist. And what do we do with a blacklist? We are blocking. We're, we're applying the mail flow policy called blocked, and the action is to block the connection. So, what do you do if you still have too much spam? So what could we do here? We could come and try to tweak the hat. 
I mentioned this a little earlier in the previous, uh, actually in the previous recording, that by default, what happened if we were receiving a connection with no score? Someone just started sending email a few seconds ago, and we happen, it's a brand new MTA with a brand new IP address, just starting to send email. When we receive that incoming session, we query, uh, we query sender base, tell us, tell us return a score, no score yet. By default, the no score would say, well, it's not being relayed, it's not on my whitelist, and it's not a score that fits in any of these. So where does the session, the TCP request falls? It falls under uh, all, and all means we are accepting. And when we are accepting, let me go back a couple of slides, actually. What happened when we are accepting? So when we, are, when we have an accept, actually, we are, if we, are, we have an accept uh, under, sorry, all over here, we have, this, this is the one, all, an accept under all. We have actually no throttling imposed, but we still do dynamic spam and dynamic anti and antivirus. But we're not doing any throttling. So what about if that brand new IP address for which we have no score happens to, um, to be maybe a spammer? So one thing you can do to tweak your hat to try to help with the spam is actually a couple of things you can do. So yeah, you could come and play with make it, uh, make it stricter. And according to the BU, the business unit at Cisco, those responsible for the ESA, they have seen actually some organization move the slider to from minus three to say blacklist, from minus three to minus two. The problem is that you might have legitimate senders that just had bad luck, bad reputation, and you would be blocking them. So you can do that, but uh, it would be a little bit more aggressive way. Now, what, aga what about your reputation score of none? which happens to be falling under all, and therefore you're accepting the connection without any throttling. So to play it safe, to play it safe, here's one of the tweaks you will do. So please go back to editing your suspect list. And again, how do you edit your su suspect list? You go under the hat, and where it's written suspect list, that blue suspect list is actually a hyperlink. You click on it, it will take you to this page. And from this page, make sure that you put a check mark under include SBRS score of none. Because by default, again, score of none falls in the all category. You're accepting the connection without any throttling. Now what we're saying is that suspect list, which are using throttle, will have any new connection without a score. Maybe it's a legitimate, maybe it's a spammer. And if it's a spammer, we are limiting the amount of email we can receive from that spammer. So what do we discuss in this section, we, uh, in this recording? We actually discuss how the TELUS using the sender base reputation score is our first line of defense against spammers. Thank you very much for listening.